Capcom Arcade Stadium Pack 2, which covers the years 1989 to 1992, is subtitled Arcade Revolution, but I'm not sure that's a very accurate description of what we find on here. Pack 1 was called Dawn of the Arcade and featured a lot of titles from a period when games were really experimenting with forms and genres and trying to find their feet. Pack 3, on the other hand, chronicles a time when shmups were pushing boundaries and expanding ideas with new and unusual mechanics. Pack 2, caught between these two extremes, rather than exhibiting anything revolutionary, is more a solidification of the early experiments from the arcade's earliest days into something like a standardised form, which later games could then use as a jumping off point, a solid base from which to explore more esoteric directions. What that means is that the four shmups on offer here, 1941, Senjo no Okami 2, Carrier Airwing and Varth, don't really exhibit the same ups and downs that we saw in pack 1, certainly. Instead, this pack is the most consistent of the three, and none of the shmups you'll find on here are anything less than very good. The flip side of this consistency is, however, that none of the shmups on here are anything more than very good. Basically, they're all solid, quality titles, but none of them really push that boat out. They are accompanied, of course, by six other titles, and I think if non-shmups are any part of the appeal of these collections to you, Pack 2 may be very attractive. We have Street Fighter 2 for the three fighting fans worldwide who don't already own it, platformer Mega Twins, and action games Strider, Dynasty Wars, Final Fight, and Captain Commando. Again, I think a lot of these may be available elsewhere, but they provide some nice additional content for anyone picking this up for the shmups. Speaking of which, let's begin our exploration of the four shmups with a look at 1941 Counter-Attack, a game that's going to have you absolutely bouncing off the walls. Now if 1942 from Pack 1 was a bit basic, and the collection's free game 1943 was a slow but steady improvement on that initial title, 1941 was where the series really started coming into its own. Despite retaining the military setting of its predecessors, this one really puts its own stamp on things with some fun mechanics and some of the best visual design in the whole series. Those two things actually combine in the form of a lot of long sections of stages that see you enclosed by canyon walls or lines of buildings, plus the fact that touching these walls does not kill you, but rather sends you spinning as you bounce away spraying bullets all round. This is not just a funny effect either, you can and often will have to use this technique to your advantage, especially with lots of enemies entering and approaching from the bottom of the screen. There are some cool set pieces in here too, and overall it is a marked improvement on the previous two games, and like everything else on this collection, very good. The second game is another that, like Commando on Pack 1, may not 100% be a shmup, but man, it's close enough for me. Senjo no Okami 2, or Mercs as it was apparently known in the West, is from 1990, and like Commando sees you deposited on the ground in a war zone and charged with visiting death and destruction upon anyone and anything that stands in your way. The game offers a lot of variety in its weapon selection, with the flamethrower being a particular favourite of mine, and further mixes things up by, at intervals, allowing you to jump into abandoned enemy vehicles and just rip things up like an absolute fucking boss. The first time I did this it was with pure unadulterated glee, and the game keeps this gleeful feeling right up to the end by steadily escalating the sheer badassery of the vehicles you're commandeering, from jeeps to jet skis to tanks. Despite being 30 years old, the game does an incredible job with its thrilling, almost cinematic set pieces that remind me at times, and I'm not joking, of some of the most fun parts of the Uncharted series. This is again a very very good game, and it's really got me excited for M2's upcoming port of Outzone, which I'd previously not been paying that much attention to. By the way, if anyone knows a good designation for these not quite shmup, not quite run and gun type games, please do drop it in the comments. Okay, game 3, which is again from 1990, is Horizontal Scroller Carrier Airwing. This one is another that's never been seen outside the arcade before, and it's great to see it being made so readily available. It's another with a military theme and sees your playable fighter jet launching before each stage from an aircraft carrier or mid-air refueling station to launch attacks against some sort of terrorist nation. That refueling and relaunching aspect plays its part in game too, with your health bar being replaced by a fuel gauge that gradually depletes as you fly, and of course drops far more quickly whenever you take a hit. You also earn dollars as well as points during play, and can use these at stage end to add to your options for the following stage. 
there's not the greatest variety in main shot types, but your secondary weapons are all very different, and unlike bombs, which are usually granted in stocks of three, you'll often be firing off these more powerful shots 10, 20 or more times per stage. And you're going to need to because the bosses in this game give new meaning to the term bullet sponge. They are often massive and include aircraft carriers or enemy castles, requiring you to fly over the top of them, then double back on yourself to re-engage in second or third flyovers. The game has 10 stages and for me just slightly outstays its welcome, but it's still once again very good, but no more than that. The last game is Varth Operation Thunderstorm from 1992. Varth is simultaneously the closest any shmup on this pack comes to taking things beyond the description very good, and also the biggest disappointment. The first few stages of Varth are fantastic. The terrain is really detailed and well realised, the enemies are varied, there are tons of little secrets hidden away such as this view from Street Fighter leaping up with a loud, loud Hadouken, and the moment to moment gameplay is both solid and fun with a bomb replenishing mechanic that adds an interesting extra layer to proceedings. The stages remain varied as you move past the 7th, 8th, 9th stage, but the longer the game goes on, the more its faults start to show, and as enemies, bosses and backgrounds start to repeat, all the good work of its first moments starts coming undone. By the time the 30th stage rolls around, you're saying stick a fork in me, I'm done, which is such a shame given how promising everything starts off. Now, Varth wouldn't even need whittled down to the traditional seven stages. With its short and quick stages, some ending without a boss, it could easily remain 10 to 15 stages long and still be great, and maybe even better if the time spent creating the second half of the game had been used instead to refine the first. Unfortunately, that's not what happened, and with this issue on top of some annoying shot noises and mediocre music, Varth doesn't quite achieve what could have been some very special potential. It is, like everything else on here, very good, but it's just such a shame it wasn't allowed to be more than that. So there we go, pack two and it's four very good shmups. One great thing about this pack, by the way, is all the verts here do display optimally when rotated, and I think it's another set of games most fans will have a lot of fun with if they pick it up. This is the last of these overview videos, so thank you to all of you who have been watching. I hope these have been useful in helping you pick which, if any, of these packs to try out. Enjoy the games if you do get them, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.